My brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our guided gospel contemplation series. This series is to introduce you to the Ignatian contemplation method of prayer. I would like to invite you to follow this series with an open mind and heart and allow the Holy Spirit to deepen your personal relationship with Jesus in God's time and ways. Let us then begin. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, What matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleophas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and the whole people. And how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened. And some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us that they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of them they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe, the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then, the, then he broke it and handed it to them, and their eyes were open, and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, in the gospel that we just heard proclaimed, I'm sure all of us are familiar with the episode. Let us first note that these two disciples were walking away from the city of Jerusalem. So symbolically, they were moving away from the center of the truth of the gospel of Jesus' suffering, death and resurrection. And thus is it, it's not surprising that they were downcast. When Jesus joined them along the way, they ironically accused Jesus of being the only visitor to Jerusalem who did not know what had happened there. In fact, Jesus is the divine visitor to Jerusalem and he is the visitor and person who is the essence and core of everything that had happened. 
is indeed the awaited Messiah who was rejected, mocked, scourged, crowned, and crucified so cruelly. Because the Jewish authorities were determined to destroy all the truth that Jesus had proclaimed and witnessed, and most especially all the evidences of the facts that Jesus had risen from his death, the disciples then tried to explain. But in the darkness of being downcast, they could not make sense of what had happened in Jerusalem. In spite of the women and other disciples' testimonies that Jesus had risen, they remained in their darkness, unconvinced and blind. Their hopes of Jesus, a great prophet being the expected Messiah, were shattered in their disillusionment. But all of these darkness and gloom dissipated at the breaking of the bread, and they recognized Jesus and their eyes were open and their hearts were filled with the immense joy of the risen Lord, which they could not contain. Even as it was already dark, they set out immediately to return to Jerusalem to announce the good news of the risen Lord, whom they had seen to their fellow companions. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope these brief thoughts have been of help to you to have been to be able to appreciate the gospel more fully as we prepare for our gospel contemplation and so let us now prepare our hearts and allow the holy spirit to touch us during our contemplation prayer before we begin may i invite you to perhaps click the pause button and then prepare the ambience for our contemplation. For this, you could perhaps choose a quiet corner or perhaps your bedroom and light a votive candle, dim the lights, draw the curtains, if this is of some help. And of course, switch off your mobile phone or put your house phone on DND. But for those of you who already are in a good ambience for your prayer, we can then proceed. Brothers and sisters, I would like to add some brief pointers for the contemplation. But if you wish to have more details of the different aspects of the contemplation, please click to the link in the video description below for contemplation details after this prayer to learn more. I will be guiding you along during the contemplation. Follow what I say only if you find them to be helpful. This means that if the Holy Spirit is guiding you differently, then ignore what I am saying. Secondly, there will be moments of silences and they are deliberate and needed. So as to give you the needed spiritual space for the Holy Spirit and you to interact with one another. So let us begin with composing yourself. Close your eyes for a few moments. Now, and become conscious of the air that you are breathing in by focusing on your nostrils. As you breathe in, feel the gracious gift of God to you, the gift of life coming from the God of love, filling your lungs with the gift of life from God. Feel each breath with gratitude in your hearts to God. Thank the Lord for the gift of life.
this God who is the giver of life is within your heart, loving you personally at all times. Feel his loving presence within your heart. Prayer for the graces that we need during the contemplation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of being able to contemplate this episode of the road to Emmaus. Send us your Holy Spirit to help us encounter Jesus in a personal way along the road to Emmaus. And also to encounter him at the breaking of bread so that our love for Jesus, our risen Lord, will be renewed. Imagine yourself present at the scene of the gospel. You are walking along the road towards the village of Emmaus with two other companions. The road is dusty. You all walk in silence as you are all feeling downcast. Get in touch with your inner feelings of what may also be burdening you at present and making you feel down or discouraged or desperate. Jesus comes along and joins you. You allow him to walk with you, but does not pay much attention to him. And continue to share and discuss with one another what had happened to Jesus of Nazareth. In your sharing, you are feeling deeply discouraged and depressed. Get in touch with your inner feelings. Jesus then respectfully asked, What are you discussing about? Somewhat confused and impatient, Cleopas answers, You must be the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know what had happened there these last few days. What things? Jesus responded. With a deep sigh, you try to explain what you knew about Jesus of Nazareth. You shared your hopes that he was the Messiah you had been waiting for all these years. But now, 
you are utterly disillusioned and depressed of what had happened. Finally, when you all reached your home in Emmaus, you persuaded and insisted that Jesus stay for the night as it was already getting dark. Jesus obliged. Then as all of you sat together for the supper, Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, then he broke it and handed it to you and the other disciples. You were all suddenly deeply astonished. You suddenly recognize that it is indeed Jesus whom you have known and loved. He is now alive. He has risen. And your heart is filled with great joy. But Jesus, the risen Lord, vanishes before your eyes. You then look at each other with your hearts bursting with joy and spontaneously exclaim, Our Lord has risen. Our Lord has risen. It is true. All that we heard from the women and our companions are true. Jesus is truly risen. Get in touch with the inner feelings of great joy and jubilation because Jesus, who has died, is now risen. Feel the joy within your heart.
Then you said, yes, were not our hearts burning with joy too when he explained the scriptures to us? All of you jump up, and even though it was late, you immediately decided to go to Jerusalem to announce this great news to the other eleven. become conscious that you are now leaving the scene of the gospel and preparing yourself to be present at where you are now praying. And be conscious that the risen Lord is now present in your heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as in the last session, let us be reminded that it is very important that we review our prayer experiences. This review is to recall what happened during the prayer. In particular, we are urged to pay particular attention to our inner feelings of whether you are drawn closer to God with greater encouragement during the prayer which St. Ignatius would call spiritual consolation. Or you may be drawn away from God and feel discouraged and distant from Him, which St. Ignatius would call spiritual desolation. If these inner feelings are very intense in your experience, of the presence of God in a very deep way, then you can be sure that you are experiencing spiritual consolation. But if the intensity is very mild, just accept what you have experienced and let it be. Deep spiritual consolation are gifts from God during your prayer life. However, the opposite where you experience spiritual desolation can also happen. We will be introducing and guiding you with different elements of how we can discern God's will. In the time to come, we hope you will be able to be comfortable 
with what discernment of God's will is about. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer. I would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, then please click the link below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you will soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit. That will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. Take one patient step at a time. And God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experiences of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. Thank you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, for joining in the Gospel contemplation. And do note that St. Ignatius of Loyola would say that to repeat the contemplation prayer can also help you deepen your experiences of Jesus. Take care and God bless you.